might get a bit emotional. That's working perfectly still after 30 years. And it's from Beverly Hill. You make an old broad very happy. Happy Mother's Day. In this video, in this video, apart from drinking gin and cheers, I'm going to be opening my mother's makeup box. My mother died almost 30 years ago. She would have been 100 if she'd lived to the 29th of April 2023 because she was born in 1923 on the 29th of April, which coincidentally is my daughter's birthday as well. And so for Mother's Day this year, because my mum would have been 100 and because I've never really taken a deep dive into her makeup box, I'm going to open it on camera and we're going to have a little play with the makeup. Now, this makeup, apart from me looking into the box when she died, and probably a few years ago as well, just to make sure there wasn't anything that was going to go really badly off, I haven't actually examined what's in it at all. And there is some makeup, and there's probably a bit of skincare and some other bits and bobs. And this makeup box is over 30 years old. And the only person who's ever worn any of the makeup in this box is my mum. So it may get emotional. But we'll see how we go. And I thought it would be fun, given that my make my my makeup, given that my channel is not primarily about makeup, but there is a lot of makeup in it or on it. I thought it would be fun to see what she wore. Now her colouring was a little bit different from mine. She had more bluey green eyes and sort of unusually slightly more neutrally olivey, slightly yellowy toned. So it'll be interesting to see. I think some of her lipsticks, for example, will be a little bit more orange than I would wear. Now, I haven't put any lipstick on because I want to try some of the lipsticks on my lips. And yes, I know they are over 30 years old, but only her lips have touched them. And so I think it will be fine. So this is my mum. And this was her about uh, in about the late 80s, I would say. And I never used to think we looked alike, but I think I've grown to look like her as I've got older. I always thought I looked more like my dad, although, to be honest, my parents could have been brother and sister. They looked quite alike when they were much younger. So I'm very flattered to uh, be compared to her. She was a very beautiful woman. So without further ado, let's open the box. Before we go any further, let's have a gin and tonic. Mmm. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what's in here. There's also lots of sellotape around the handle. But anyway, oh, let's see what we can find. Now, what I did earlier on was I put the makeup, or quite a while ago actually, I put the makeup in a plastic box so that it would be separate from the other stuff that's in here. Sorry, this glass is tinkling like mad, but sorry about that. And then you can see there's lots of other bits and bobs, which we'll get to in a minute, if I can bear it. Might get a bit emotional. But let's have a look at the makeup first. So what have we got? Well, immediately there's a huge powder puff. Now, as we know, powder puffs back in the day were a thing, weren't they? So I don't think I'll bother trying this, but it actually smells very nice. It smells powdery. It smells of mum. And we've got a hairnet, which were very, oh gosh, look, do you know, it hasn't even been opened. Look at that. Boots, 29p. <laughs> Made in the UK, nylon with elastic bands. Now these, my mum would have put on her hair or one of them um, before she put her wigs on. She had a, a collection of wigs and she often used to wear a wig um, on screen or in the theatre. So she would use these, she'd put a hairnet on and then put the wig over the top. Now, what's this? Rose tinted powder leaves, Crabtree and Evelyn. Ooh, directions for use. And it says, detach a leaf and, oh, I can't read that, pass the powdered side with, a gent with gentle pressure over the face. This will remove dust and shine. Oh, and import a delightful feeling of freshness and cleanliness. How lovely. And look at that. I don't think she's used any of them. They don't really smell of rose, to be honest. They smell a bit like the powder puff. And I don't think I'm going to try them, to be honest, because they are 30 years old or more. 
but that's a lovely idea. But I mean, I do vaguely remember sort of using, um, well, I don't think I did, or maybe I did, I don't know. I vaguely remember the, uh, the sort of idea of using a paper to sort of take the shine away from your nose. And these are rose tinted. I don't know whether that means they've got perfume in them, but back in the day, you didn't have to put ingredients on everything. Anyway, a lovely idea, very pretty. Now, before we get into the makeup, let's just look at the tools we've got. So we've got a rather grotty old brush and a grotty old um, sponge applicator here. We've got another grotty old brush. Oh, God, look at that. Um, and then and we've got another little tiny brush, which I presume would have been for lips. Actually, I remember my mother used to use a lip brush a lot. Oh, we don't really use them nowadays. So I think that's all the tools. Let's go into the makeup. So we've got some crystal lacquer colourless nail varnish by Rimmel. We've got, oh, how funny, Ice Mini Dab on Cologne. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, it's 4711. Oh my gosh, that was in Woolworths. That was the classic Woolworths fragrance, wasn't it? Ew. Oh, no, I think that's gone off. Not surprising after 30 years, is it? Now, what else have we got here? We've got Yardley. Gosh, there's a name to conjure with, isn't it? Yardley, you don't see that anymore. Multi-lash mascara with fibres. Well, look, it's still there and it's quite liquidy. But again, I'm not sure I'm going to try that. Then we've got, ah, Leishner, of course. Now, Leishner, Leishner was the classic makeup um brand for the theater now i wonder if this is actually is that it no i don't know i don't know how you open it or maybe that is the maybe that's it i can't seem to get anything out of it so i think whatever it was it's dried up it was number seven anyway then we've got eye dust star stargaze stargazer Eye dust contains mica. Well, that's nothing new, is it? And carmine. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. Ah, it's a powder. Oops. It's gone everywhere. Okay, so the next thing we've got is Cry Cryolan Theatre Cosmetic. Ah, it's a German cosmetic. Mm -hmm, jawohl. So that is a brown pencil. Yeah, that's all okay. And look, it still works after 30 years. Good to know, although probably I'll pass on that as well. Then we've also got, what is this? I have no idea what that is. Let me just open it. It's a sort of multicoloured, dual-ended thing. Oh, yeah, it's just another brush. Mm, yeah, probably not worth paying much attention to. Then we've got here, this looks like a black, oh, no, that's another brush. Right, what's this? Fine liner. Oh, that's another brush. Sorry, lots of brushes. Very, very boring. Ah, here's another Leishner. God, she really liked her brown makeup, didn't she? Stage makeup 8016. Well, that's got a tiny bit. Oh, yeah, it has got some colour in it. Look. But what it would be for, I don't know. Grease paint liners, it says. Oh, interesting. Now, what have we got here? Oh, Mary Quant. Colour up. Look at that, Mary Quant. Gosh, that really brings back memories. I love Mary. She was probably the first brand that I ever wore. Now, this looks like some kind of blusher. Oh, yeah, it is. And you can see, very orangey, isn't it? Right, let's see if it's... Yep, it's still got some... Oh, look, there it is. Wow. My gosh, look at that. That is real terracotta, that is. I presume she would use that on her cheeks. Yeah, it says blusher. Yeah, that is a cream blusher. But it's a hell of a strong colour, isn't it? You'd have to be quite careful when you put that on. Right, what have we got here? This is Bramble Glow Maxi Glow Br Blush <laughs> brush by Max Factor. Now, that's a more usable colour, I would say. Not quite as deep as that other one we looked at. Let's see if we can get some colour out of that. You see what I mean about her her colours that she chose were definitely more warm than the colours I would use. I would not really go for a colour like that. But she definitely had a warmer skin tone than I did. Right, it's slightly covered in blue, but this is the Rimmel 
translucent blush. And again, it's really very terracotta. You talk about hitting pan. She's definitely hit pan there, hasn't she? I think that must have been a powder. But again, it's quite a, it's a very unusual colour, that, isn't it? Yeah, not sure um, I'd be wearing anything like that. So that's another blusher. And there's no foundation, unfortunately. And for some reason or other, there's another not terribly exciting blue um, eyeshadow. I don't remember her wearing blue eyeshadow but I suppose she must have I'm not going to swatch it because look at the color <laughs> and before we get to the lipsticks of which there are one two three four five six seven eight nine lipsticks we've got a pencil another brown pencil oh, this is a coal pencil because she used to ring her eyes and I see that's working perfectly still after 30 years so it just shows you I mean whether it was whether it's hygienic to use after 30 years I don't know but it's still working Now let's come to the lipsticks and this is the bit I'm really looking forward to because we've got quite a few. So the first one is, this is Truly Red by, don't know, oh Rimmel I think. Oh, <laughs> it's one of those push-up ones. Ooh. Okay, let's swatch a few of these because that would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, that's rather nice, but as you can see it's quite a warm red. So I don't know, I'm not sure I'm going to try that one. I'll see as we go. Then we've got there quite a few rimmels actually. Another rimmel, and this one is ah yes, that's very nice. That's more is that more pillar box red? Actually, that's warmer than the other one. Very nice, still working perfectly, still nice and moist. Then we've got red rose, another rimmel. This is more orangey. That one there. I wonder if Rimmel do any of these shades still. Another Rimmel. Ah, oh, this one looks a lot paler. Sweet Clover, this one. Oh, yeah, this is uh, this is one of those sort of pearlized jobbies, which you don't really see so much these days. They were, oh, my gosh, that's very light. Look, that's a sort of pale apricot, isn't it? Sort of. Well, maybe not apricot. I'm not quite sure what colour that is. Maybe pale peach. Now... Is that, oh yeah, this is another Rimmel and this one is, this is a normal push-up jobby as opposed to it. This is Russet in Gold. Wow, that's a bit electric, that one. <laughs> I might try that one just for a laugh. And then we've got, let's see what else have we got. This is another Rimmel and this one is Rosy Shimmer. Okay, yeah, there's definitely a bit of a theme going on here, isn't there? And then we've got another Rimmel, I think, which is Glossy Lip Tint, Crimson Gloss, this one. Ooh, this looks nice. Oh, yeah, that's very glossy. Oh, I rather like that. I might try that one. You can see it's not quite as, it's much sheerer than the others. And then there's two more. So let me just look at the other two, because I don't think these are Rimmels. This one is Lipstick. Yeah, well, we know it's a Lipstick. Oh, it's got a rather pretty face on there, but it doesn't seem to say what brand it is. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> What's happened to that? <laughs> yes, that's slightly weird, but I think the colour... Oh, that's a rather good colour, actually. Look at that. I might try that one as well. And then finally, we've got this one is Rouge Rouge by Lancôme. Ah, très bien. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is the sort of colour I remember my mum wearing. A real sort of blood red, I would say. That's that big swatch there. So you can see most of the colours are quite warm. I mean, even the blood red. In fact, maybe it's more pillar box red. I don't know. That's a rather fantastic colour. So I think what I'm going to do just for fun is I'm going to try them on for you. So let's try the glossy lip tint first. Hmm. I think that's rather nice. Do you know what? I wonder if this is the way to wear red lipstick if you're a little bit nervous about wearing a bold red. Because look, it's not too strong. It feels really nice on the lips. And this hasn't been on anyone's lips except my mum's for 30 years and that's incredible really but that is a beautiful 
lip color i'm not sure i'll carry on wearing it just in case it's going to give me an allergy or something but um i really think that's a very attractive color so really delighted with that right this is the one that's helpfully just called lipstick but had the really attractive sort of figure on the front here and it's the one with the very strange shape <laughs> but i like the darkness of it i think it's quite attractive it's sort of a burgundy almost so let's just see if i can get anything out of it Oh yeah, that's quite good. It's quite strong though, isn't it? Yes, it's <laughs> might be a bit dark for me, but um, I can see that it's a great colour. But I feel slightly Cruella de Vil. No, she didn't really do that, did she? What did she do? I don't know. I've never really, I haven't seen 101 Dalmatians since I was a kid. And finally, let's try the Rouge Rouge by Lancôme, in fact. Let's put that on. Mm, slightly strange smell that one maybe it's gone slightly off but what do we think of the color i think to me this red absolutely epitomizes my mum this is how i remember her this is the sort of lipstick that i remember her wearing but i just think it's a little bit on the warm side for me so let's continue with the box and see what else we can find so we have got a card best wishes love francis and it seems to have Francis of Assisi on the front. I don't know why. And there's a telegram. Remember those? Oh. Maxine Audley, the Old Vic Theatre Stage Door, Waterloo Road, London, SE1, England. And it's from Beverly Hills, California. It says 2925 1058. Oh, here we are, 25th of October, 1985. Wow. Dear darling Maxine and everyone, have as wonderful last night as mine. Love to you all, Kate. Oh, do you know, I think I know who this is from. I think this is Kate O'Mara. Not Kate Mara, by the way, but Kate O'Mara, who was a British actress who acted with my mum. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I know what play this is. I think she was either in the play or she'd been in the play and left it and gone to something else because I'm sure I've got a photo of my darling daughter, Maxine, named after my mum, with Kate sitting on Kate O'Mara's knee and she would have been about four or five months old. So I think this is from Kate O'Mara. She's no longer with us either. I'll try and put a picture up here of her. You might recognise her. Now, what's this? This looks like a card. Is it a card? Man, whoa, this is dated October the 11th, 1980. Maxine, a little memento of York, with many, many thanks for your invaluable help with my pieces, with love, Jilly. I don't know who that's from. And a little teddy. Oh, gosh, there's some, and there's some sort of pin. City of Elkhart, Indiana. And I think this is from a play... In fact, it might have been the same play that Kate O'Mara was talking about, which I can't remember the name of it. Was it Windy City? I'll have to have a look. It was an American play, I think. Obviously, it would be if um, it's referencing Indiana. Um, I'll see if I can find the name of it and put it down below or up in the corner or somewhere. Um, but yes, I think I know which play this was This was related to. It was something to do with the Elks. You know, there's some kind of men's club or something maybe a little bit like the masons i'm not sure <laughs> and we've got a champagne cork of course in fact it's mum cordon rouge very nice then we've got a little holder of some kind i'm not quite sure what that is and a nice pretty little box actually this is very nice i might appropriate this if i could open it oh what's inside oh it's a kind of potpourri Actually, that is very, very pretty. Look, isn't that nice? She probably was given that by somebody. Hand-painted in Kashmir, India. So there you go. Might appropriate that. And there's a balloon. <laughs> and another potpourri. A ram. And a female version. And we've got a Roger Egale Lavant de Savon, which is a soap. And there it is intact. Never been used. 30 years old. Wow. Or more, possibly, given those telegrams and um, cards and things are so old. There's a rather grotty looking little candle there. 
Then there's a purse. Oh, look at this. The Beverly Hills Hotel and bungalows. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, it's a little sewing kit. Ooh, it's a little sewing kit. I wonder if they're still giving them out. And just to cement that, cement relations, there's an American flag. And then we've got here, Christopher protects us. Oh, it's a St. Christopher. How very weird. My mum was not religious. She was actually an atheist. That pin or a pin of some kind. Now I've left this to the last because I thought I might get a bit emotional about it. I probably will. I made this for my mum when I was about, I don't know, how old would I have been? About six or seven. I mean, I can't believe I sewed these stars on. I'm sure I must have had some help because I am not dexterous at all. I'm absolutely hopeless. But there it is. I must have made this in, I don't know, the early 60s or something. So that's what's in my mother's makeup box 30 years on. It's funny, I thought I'd have a good cry while I was opening the box and looking at all the stuff, but I haven't yet. But I probably will after I've shut the camera down. But I thought it might be just fun to look at it together and I've no one else to share it with really because I know if I, oh I'm going now, <laughs> I know I knew I would, I knew I would because my darling daughter was born on my mum's birthday and I'd already thought about naming her after my mum anyway and actually my mum was Fine. Well, I think she felt a little bit odd about it. I don't know. My dad was horrified because apparently, and I didn't know this because I wasn't raised in, in a Jewish household, even though both my parents were Jewish, um, they weren't religious. They were just racially Jewish, if you like, or culturally Jewish, but they certainly weren't religious. And my dad told me that Jews, and they don't name children after living relatives. And I didn't know that. I'd already decided my um, Max's dad and I had already decided to name her Maxine. So, yeah, it's um, it would have been hard, I think, to do it with her. But I am glad I've done it because I hold her in my heart all the time. And I know that some of you watching will be in the same boat as me, that you'll have lost your mums much too early. I know my darling friend Tamara of Tamara's Timeless Beauty lost her mum far too early. And um, I'm, I'm sure there are many others of you as well. And it's very, very hard. I was only 37. I was the same age as my daughter is now when I lost my mum. And you never get over it. I mean, of course, you don't think about it every day, but you never get over it. And so... I'm not bothered about getting emails about Mother's Day. In fact, I really resent getting an email saying, do you want to be reminded of Mother's Day? I don't care. It, Mother's Day is Mother's Day and it's you can choose to celebrate it or not, as the case may be. It really doesn't matter. But it is a time that I will think a little bit about my mum, although really I tend to think of her on the 30th anniversary of her death. I don't really think about her on her birthday, although she, I know she would have been 100 on, um, or she would be 100 on the 29th of April. But that's my daughter's birthday and that's what I'm focused on. I don't focus on my mum's birthday, but I do focus on the day of her death because it was so unexpected. Even though she hadn't been all that well, she was fine and she was due to go to work that morning. So, yeah, it's very hard for us who have lost our mums. And of course, as we get older, we're more than likely to lose them anyway. I mean, I'm 68. It's not really all that surprising that I haven't got my mum anymore. It was 100 is some age, isn't it? So I hope this video has been fun. I hope it hasn't been too maudlin. I'm really glad I've done it because I've been meaning to open and kind of really examine and kind of take a deep dive, as it were, into my mum's makeup box. And maybe now that I've gone through it, I won't keep the perishables, as it were, even though some of them haven't actually perished yet, have they? They're really in relatively good nick considering they're 30 years or more old. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really hope 
that you can enjoy Mother's Day, whether you still have your mums, whether you are a mum, whether you're a granny, whatever situation you're in, we all have had mothers of some sort or another. And I hope we can celebrate that. And thank you so much for watching. I cannot tell you, it means the absolute world to me. And I know, oh, sorry, I'm going to go again. I feel that my mum is looking down on me and being proud of me for doing this because she always did encourage me to to do something to do something creative. I think she was very proud of me for having done a degree while I had two kids. And um I know she would be proud of me now if she was here. And thank you so much for watching. And this will only, <laughs> there won't be any more crying videos, not in the near future anyway. And thanks again so much for watching. And I really love you. You're all so fantastic to me and you leave such wonderful comments. And it really does mean the world to me. I am being sincere when I say that. It really does. You make an old broad very happy. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.